makonde maana ya makonde ni kwa sababu wanaishi sehemu temporary unaweza kutoka hapa mpaka Tanga bila kupata mlima jamii kubwa zaidi ya makonde imetoka kwa makua makua ni, ni kabila kubwa zaidi kuliko makabila mengine huko Mozambiki wa makonde wanacheza ngoma ya vinyago. Tata, kile kinyago wanavaa. Kutokana na ule ufundi wa wa, wa, wa vinyago ndio ukaendelea mpaka kutengeneza masanamu ya mti unaitwa mpingo. Eh mweusi sana. Wao ndio wanatengeneza makonde. Hata ukunda, hata hapo mwangwei, lunga lunga, wale wa Komalindi, ufundi wao maarufu ni huo wa masanamu. Wa makonde wanapenda kutahiri wavulana Mvulana akifika miaka benane anatahiriwa lakini wanawaweka mahala pamoja msituni mpaka siku wakiaguliwa wakipona wanawatoa kwa kucheza ngoma na, na wamakonde ndi walitoka Mozambiki wakaingia Tanzania kama ulivyosema wanapenda kazi ya mikono sana walikuwa wanachukuliwa manamba ya kukata makonge Tanzania alafu wanachukuliwa manamba kukata makonge Kenya mo. kupitia taita taveta hapo ndio palikuwa ki, kituo cha kwanza cha wamakonde kuingia Kenya mnamo mwaka 1936 alafu baadaye wengine wakagawanyika wakaja makongeni makongeni alafu baada ya kukaa makongeni waliishi wengine wakagawanyika wakaja sehemu za Ramisi Ramisi imepatikana baada ya makonge mradi wa makonge ukafutwa sasa wakaanzisha mradi wa miwa. Walifanya kazi wazee wetu katika mashamba hayo lakini ilipobadilika uongozi wa Rais Moi ikabidi wao waambiwe ni wageni wasifanye kazi. Kwa hivyo sasa kuanzia hapo ikabidi wa makonde waondolewe kwenye makampuni waanze kuangaika na maisha. Sisi ni wazaliwa wa hapa lakini shida tulizopata hapa ni nyingi. Katika enzi za moyo nakumbuka nilikuwa bado ni mdogo lakini siwezi jua ni umri gani. Palikuwa na mkorosho pale. Mamangu ashawa inibeba na tukapanda juu ya mkorosho kwa sababu ya kukimbia polisi husiku. Kusomesha mtoto inakuwa shida. Unaona wakati pengine ame fikia kiwango cha kuwa amepasi basi kufikia kwenye hali ya kupata sakabali za, za kwenda mbele huwa ni shida inabidi niende nipeleke kitambulisho inabidi nipeleke kitambulisho kitambulisho sina Aa, kuwekeza fedha kwenye benki huwa ni shida mimi nimeolewa mume wangu anza kuwa mgonjwa inakuwa ngumu kwenda kumuona. Sasa kutaka kuingia mpaka upite na kitambulisho. Amea kuna za tembe aliugua kaka almost three months admission. Si kutoka nimeenda kumuona not even a day. Kwa sababu ya nini? Ya kukosa kitambulisho. Halafu hapa penyewe singeweza hata kuhudhuria sherehe. Ningeenda ni kama naenda mazishi nitakaa mali kwa mti kama hivi. Watu wazike siwezi kwa na usaidia pale jikoni utavunja kitu. Mimi ni mchezaji wa mpira na nachezea boli hapa Kenya na nachezea division 2 sasa hii. Katika timu moja ambayo inaitwa SS Asadi. Nilipata chance ya kwenda Europe. Lakini kutokuwa na ID ndio hiyo chance ika ikaniponyoka. Nilijaribu ku apply lakini sasa walikuwa wananiambia mimi sio mkenya wananiambia mimi ni ni makonde. Nilikuwa nafanya kazi kampuni moja inaitwa Kenya Marineland ambayo nilifanya miaka ishirini. lakini baada ya kuritaya uh, nikataka kupata pesa zangu za NSSF uh, kila nilipokwenda kudai niliambiwa mpaka nitoe kitambulisho na kitambulisho mimi nilikuwa sina nikajaribu kwenda ofisi nyingi sana kama wanaweza kunisaidia hivyo lakini walikataa kata kata hata ukitokewa na shida pia ulikuwa uwezi kwenda mali ukaenda kujitetea. Kuna kitu kilinisikitisha sana katika nafsi yangu. Kuna msichana mwingine alipata mvulana akiduruma. Akawa ni boyfriend yake vile alivyompenda akamfanyia mpango akamchukulia kitambulisho kwa jina la kiduruma na akakubalikana. 
Yule msichana akawa mgonjwa akapelekwa Makadara Hospital. Akapatwa na na nani na, na, na faradhi huko kwa kafa. Yule kijana anajua anti ya yule msichana akenda akasema, akabidi akaripoti kwa ndugu zake. Wamakonde wakakusanyika kufata maiti. Wakozi wakitambulisha wambia tunatambulisha nyi wa Makonde na wanaitwa Umazi. Huu si ni Mduruma. Mwataka mwende mkamkule. So so in Kenya there are like several groups of stateless persons. One um, is the Galjil who are stripped of their nationality. There is the Pemba, the descendants from Rwanda and Burundi. There are people who are children of of colonial settlers who want who retain their British citizenship. So because they don't have Kenyan citizenship, they can't pass it to their children and can't acquire any other. There are a few Somalis who are stateless as well. But then the Makonde is like the face of statelessness in Kenya. Being stateless means that you are not recognized as a citizen by any state. You exist as a person, but uh, no state recognize you as a national. And in Kenya, it is a problem. We have people who are not Kenyans, who've been living in Kenya for a long time, who think that they belong to Kenya because that's the only country they know and most of them have, were actually born in Kenya, but they don't have an ID card, they don't have any document, they don't have any legal link with the Kenyan state. If you're stateless, one, um, it's, it's one of the worst forms of cruelty or torture that you can go through because it's not something that is of your own doing and correcting it takes a very long time. So if you're stateless, it means you're not able to access any basic services. Whenever government plans for certain things, remember most stateless people because of what they lack are very poor. So you cannot even get aid, whether it's food aid, whether it is things like when there's a flood, you can't get a mosquito net, you do not exist in the eyes of government. So your life is just there and you're a beggar and a beggar who cannot enforce any claim because you have no claim. Kutikana na hiyo shida nipo wa makonde, wali organize kujiunga kwamba tutafute njia ya kudai haki zetu kutabu sisi ni wanadamu tuko hapa na kodi tunalipa tukiwa hapa kwa nini tusiwe na haki kama eh, makondo tukiona na vaa viatu ambavyo nguo haendi kununua Tanzania anakula sima haendi kununua unga Tanzania na bidu yote anunua hapa Kenya ni kumaanisha analipa kodi hapa Kenya kwa nini tusijulikane Ndiyo harakati za wa makonde kutafuta haki zao zilipoanzia hapo zilianza kutokana na shida ndipo wa makonde wakaanza kusabuliana kwamba tuende kwa nani tukalie tukamlilie nani aweze kutusikia japo wakati ule kulikuwa hakuna eh, mashirika mengi ya kutetea kwa binadamu kwa hiyo ilikuwa ni shida eh, tulijaribu eh, mwaka 84 kumuita mkuu wa mkoa wakati ule marehemu Daudi Galugalo na kumbuka alikuja hapa hapa kulikuwa mkutano mkubwa sana wa wa makonde wabunge wetu walikuwa wakitueleza hali ya kupata vitambulisho ama uraia ni kama walichukua safari ndefu sana kutu, kutukamilishia ili jambo tukakaa muda mrefu sana ikawa sasa walikuwa wanatuahidi kwamba watatupa vitambulisho lakini imekuwaje kumbe ikawa pale pana msongamano kwa hivyo hapo ndio tulizibwa tukujua tuende wapi wala tuende wapi hapo ilifikia hapo tumesema tumetosha kwa sababu tulivumilia mwisho tukaona sasa ilipofikia ni tuko kwenye hali ngumu ya maisha tukabidi tuwatafute watu ambao wanaweza kutuelimisha ili tutafute haki yetu kwa mara ya kwanza sisi wa makonde shida yetu kulia iliangukia kwa kanisa Catholic. Kanisa Catholic walijitolea kwamba tutatoa mwangaza wa kutafuta pengine mtafanikiwa. Tulienda mwisho wao nao wakaja kukwama. Walipokwama tukatafuta tuka shirika lingine linaloitwa Muhuri la Kiislamu. Hilo tukaenda nalo hilo nalo tuka, tukashikana nao lakini tulivyoshikana naye tulienda mpaka tukaona dalili kama tunataka kufanikiwa lakini baadaye tukaja kukwama pia kwa sababu ya nini kwa sababu sisi tulikuja tunakwamisha wengi wao walikuwa wanasema hawa ni wageni kwao ni msumbiji mala hivi sisi tulikuwa tunawaambia ndio sawa sisi 
asili yetu ni Mozambiki lakini sisi hatukujui kwa sababu sisi ni kizazi kipya ambacho hata ukitupeleka Mozambiki sisi hatukujui tulipojaribu kungangana ngangana kwa mara ya kwanza mwaka na saba ndipo tulipoambiwa kwamba tunaweza kupatiwa kitambulisho kweli tulienda kwenye maofisi ya serikali tukaandikishwa makaratasi kumbe yale yale makaratasi ilikuwa kama ni kutudanganya tu tulianzia kwenye ugeni tena yani tulihesabiwa kama ugeni tunajisajili kama wageni halafu tulitarajia kwamba yataleta manufaa ikawa kimya ilipofika mwaka elfu mbili na nane tuwakaturudia tena wakatuambia sasa mtapata vitambulisho lakini tulivyokaambiwa mtapata vitambulisho lakini vitakuwa vya ugeni na mtakaa miaka mitano halafu mtapata cha uraia tukasajiliwa ndio ikawa sorry tena hatukufanikiwa tena chochote tena tukabaki tu tunazungushwa zungushwa tukienda huku oh, hivi 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 hatukuona manufaa yoyote we first interacted as a KHRC with the Makonde in 2009 when they were referred to us by our human rights network in Kwale um, who informed us about their suffering and what they have tried to do with them and other organization but it was not bearing fruit so they were supported to make um, a few to, to make a case for themselves during the constitutional review process and that informed the reforms that went into chapter 3 of the Kenyan constitution on citizenship that then recognizes that everybody um, if you've lived here long enough then you should be recognized and some children who are found here without parents then immediately become citizens by birth and then thereafter there were provisions of how stateless people can become Kenyans. That was not there before and so the Makonde made a case and there were a few other people like the Nubians who also made a case and so that was our first in interaction. We then didn't work with them for long because then like every other Kenyan we hoped that the constitution would be a new dawn and things would change automatically. But that never happened, not just for issues of statelessness, but for many other issues in Kenya. We have the Makondas from uh, Mozambique. <clears throat> now we have the Shonas uh, from uh, Zimbabwe. Obviously, you know Wapemba from Pemba. And uh, we have also the Rwandans from Rwanda. And uh, of course, the Somalis. So we classify them as stateless. Sasa ikawa pingamizi ni nini sasa kwa viongozi wetu. Manake mara wakitoka wana siasa wanakuja wanadanganya wanadanganya ah nyinyi ngojeni tu. Kitamsho vitamsho mtapata. Wengine kwa tunawatumia hata machifu tukienda pale ana kupeleka kwa dio. Hawa hawa vitamsho hapo. Hawa watapata. Sasa tukaendelea mwisho wake tukafanya nini? Tukasema hapana. Watu wa wa, wa haki za utetezi wa haki za binadamu. Sisi ni binadamu. Muonaji when you think about the challenges that, uh, for example, the Makonde community has gone through in search for being uh, citizens of Kenya, they've tried to reach out to different sectors. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the civil society. Uh, you'll find that um, they really worked with uh, the civil society in, uh, in Mombasa, in Kuale. It wasn't very easy because this is an area also that many, many of the civil society also is not looking into. So they, they didn't get um, help in terms of uh, uh, the right information, even the finances of moving from place to place. Um, when you look at in terms of uh, government, they move from uh, different offices, uh, even from the assistance from the county government of Kwale. But uh, many a times they were told that um, something will come up and the government is looking into this issue and it took such a long time that uh, that is when the Makonde community got to KHRC and an intervention took place. We received a letter, actually we were copied in their letter to the Attorney General where they were seeking to know when they would be registered as citizens because they had been advised by somebody that there is a new law that allows for registration. They actually just quoted the constitution rather than the actual law that provides for their registration and we started following through. So we replied to them and sought to get their contact. And because it's, it's a stateless community, somebody had just supported them to write the letter. The address was a telephone number. So we followed through with their chairman and found out what they were going through. And they said all their letters to the attorney general back then in 2013, by the time we received that copy, that was like their third letter 
to government, but they had not received any response. And we agreed first for us to be able to proceed, we need to understand how the Makonde live. Um, and in so doing, we developed a questionnaire so that the research was led by the UNHCR, which is mandated globally to work on statelessness. And KHRC was one of the lead partners in developing the questionnaires and moving around in all the villages um, in about three, no, four counties where we have traces of the Makonde and like in Kwale where we have the bulk of the Makonde. And this research was important because we were able to finally determine the numbers. And we, were, we got close to 4,000 of, of people who are Makonde, and we realized most of them have intermarried with other communities. We, 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 we were able to get to how they live, the challenges they face. Through the leadership of the Makonde community, we shared this concern with the County Assembly of, of, of Kuali. And then uh, this committee uh, actually petitioned the president. And uh, when they petitioned the president, we thought that things would move fast, but the issue was taken to Parliament. Uh, I don't know what actually happened, but somewhere along the way, we realized that uh, time was really moving fast. Because uh, in 19, in 2000, and, uh, and uh, according the, the Parliament, Parliament came up with the law that was 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 meant to be enacted. That is the Citizenship and Immigration Act of Kenya 2011. <laughs> when that law was passed, we, as an organization, we almost relaxed that things will be done, or things will just happen automatically, but nothing happened. Uh, three years later, or four years later, in 2016, nothing had happened. And this law had a timeline. This law had to elapse in, 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 in 30th of August 2016. So somewhere in July 2016, we, also, we converged again that is Kenya Human Rights Commission and uh, ourselves as Kuali Human Rights Network and the Makondi community. And we sat down and, I mean, had a very, very serious thought about this issue. And we asked ourselves, what can we do? As I was going to go to the hotel, I was going to say that I was going to go to the hotel. I was going to say that I was going to go to the hotel. Why don't you go? wakati ndio ilikuwa msukosuko wa hizi attacks tukasema tuweza kwenda tupigo tuonekane kwamba sisi tunafanya nini la shabab we sit down and plan we felt we felt the need to intervene because one um, this is something that had been neglected for a very long period it, it, it meant that these communities, remember the Makonde were not just waiting for help. They had tried to do what they could within um, their own means. And we felt that if, if the Makonde be problem became our problem, then their success would become our success. And it was a human rights issue. And, and so if at all we can make a small change for these people that can, can then um, spill over and support any other any other people in accessing their rights, then we would be fulfilling our mandate and transforming society into a better place. Wamuzi ukaja ya kwamba tuwa ya mwisho kabisa ni kufanya maandamano kuelekea Nairobi ili kwenda kukutana na rais. Baada ya kujaribu mbinu zote za kufata katiba na sheria lakini zile ngazi zinazohusika na mambo ya usajili wa watu wali tukatalia. In Kenya, we have a coalition on citizenship and nationality that has many civil society organizations that some of them work on birth registration, vetting for IDs and everything. But within that coalition, KHRC is tasked with national level advocacy. And during that meeting, everybody just said the Makonde are very frustrated. We had better do something. But we told them, if you look at the way Kenya is right now, we cannot do anything on behalf of the Makonde. They have to be at the forefront, they must organize themselves and lead whatever intervention that we, we go through. They said, um, so we informed them at that point that they had requested us to bring them to Nairobi. And we were like, no, we can't just bring them. They, they must work for it and show to the whole world what it is, th their resolve to end their suffering of being stateless. 
We had many options other than the trek that we could have uh, that we could have uh, gone for to, add, to to attract attention to the Makonde people. But uh, we thought a trek was an attractive option because of the difficulties that uh, were clear with regard to the trek. <laughs> We planned of how we can be able to walk and other logistics. Uh, we began an intensive publicity campaign, including opening up of WhatsApp pages, uh, using art uh, to, uh, to mobilize the community, and even songs. kusanyika makongeni tukiongozwa na mashirika yote ya kutetea haki za binadamu hapa kwani tukaanza kwa maombi na mara baada ya maombi maandamano yalianza toka makongeni mpaka Nairobi safari haikuwa mbaya hivyo lakini ilikuwa mbaya kiasi fulani kwa sababu tulitembea tulitembea sawa sawa kabisa tunavyotembea lakini vikwazo tulikumbana na vya serikali tulipotoka makongeni tulipofika ukunda tukaanza kusikia misamaro anakuja aweze kuzungumza tufanye nini si tukasema tuende mtu atakutana na yeye atazungumza tumsikize alafu tuendelee na safari ye, na safari yetu tukaenda mpaka ngombeni ndio misamaro alikuja akazungumza tukamweleza zile shida na tumejaribu kwa kwenda kwao kukunyenyekea na yale mabarua hawajatujibu na hakuna kitu ameza kufanya nini hakuna kitu ameza kutujibu ile cabinet memo imekuwa prepared na inangoja the next cabinet meeting the next cabinet meeting ambao inaweza kuwa next week na hiyo ndiyo kufuatana na cabinet secretary itakuwa main agenda so um we went through um, after um, a good reply from Ngoli, Mzenguli. Mzenguli actually replied, that was the best reply that I can ever remember from Ngoli. Ngoli said, Ukijaribu kuongea kwa mambo ya media, wanasema nyimbo wana maongea kwa media. Si mtufuate. Na ukiwafuata, wanakuambia mambo yote tulimaliza ya kuna Nairobi. Sasa nakuuliza bwana afisa, tufanye je. Manake mambo yote ni Nairobi. So the, the many times we were blocked anyway, but we managed to reach to Mombasa. So that was the first day. We, too, we had a night in Mombasa and um, the following day we woke up very early in the morning, of course with so many challenges as well, um, and we started the journey again. This time around we were going from Mombasa to Voi. So again, when we were uh, on our way, uh, just about to reach Voi, when we were just about to enter Voi, we were again blocked. So at that point, again, the leadership of KHRC at that moment and the leadership of the Makonde went to meet with them. And they were like, why are you trekking? And we showed them, um, so I would trek with a, with a bag with all the notification. So that was in Taita Taveta, so I removed the notification for Taita Taveta and that of the Inspector General. So this is our notification, this is why we are tracking, this is why we are here and we are peaceful. They were like, okay, they were very confused, they tried to stop us. Then they were like, what's your name, who is your contact person? So I gave them my contacts and they were like, fine, you guys proceed. But we had not even moved 200 meters or 500 meters after feeling, ah, these ones are easy. Then there was... Um, a police car blocked the road and we were all like um, asked to go into a police station. So, and that by then it was late. Tui tunafikiri penjine ni traffic wanafanya nini? Tufikiri ni traffic. Lakini bada si kuingia ilikuja ikaenda, ikapita uko mbele. Kufika mbele ikaenda ikablock. Kublock, 
Sasa gari zingine zinapita kando zinaingia sisi tunaoneshwa kuingia station. Tunaoneshwa kuingia. Hawa wengine wewe pita huko haya na magari yetu tukaingia. Luckily um even those who were holding us did not actually have any reason to hold us because they had no factual information as to why we should not do what we are doing. We have not fought anyone, we have not tampered with uh, the government procedures or anything, we are just walking on our way. They wanted us to surrender the keys of uh, our vehicles. We had about 10, 10, 10 buses, mini buses. They told us that they wanted the, the keys for those buses and the licenses, the driver license for those drivers. But it, one of us picked those keys and those licenses. And because we are wearing, we are, all, all of us are wearing red t-shirts. So nobody would know, would identify who was the driver and who was not, who was a, 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 just a, a tracker. Then they told us to stay in our buses. And we were like, no, if you are arrested, you are arrested in a police station. So we, everybody came and sat outside on, on Maram, outside the, the police station. And everything in that police station just came to a standstill because there's nothing you could do. You couldn't access the entrance, you couldn't do anything. Tulianza kupiga makelele hapo kituo cha polisi mpaka wakakasirika kwa mbao mbona wana makelele. Mwisho, tulizungumza nao, na wakubwa walizungumza nao, wakasema basi nendeni, heti tulikuwa tulimenzuia kwa sababu ya usalama wenu, siju nini, nendeni mkalale, kesho yake, mkubwa wenu wajapa zungumza. Sidhani kama mkubwa wetu alirudi huko na kesa sisi, tulilala tutuka muki ya safari, tukaenda safari yetu. So along the way, when we reached at Makini to buy water, so when we went to buy water, already the people, the local people, were already aware about uh, our coming and our presence. So we not even need to tell them. Uh, and you know, we were branded, eh? uh, T-shirts, of course, with the, the cabin messenger. But even when, when we went to buy water, uh, those guys were telling us, actually we heard about your, your story and your coming since yesterday. So to me, that was very interesting. It means actually along the way, and also going by the strategy we used, we got a lot of uh, feasibility, a lot of legitimacy, and also a lot of support from the from, from general public, basically. <laughs> wanaambiwa nyinyi leta ni kutambulisho vya mama na vya mababa inakuwa watoto wetu tuwanunulia mababa wengine na mama mwingine na ikiwa mtoto ansoma skuli pia siwazi kwenda nkagua mpaka aende yule baba ambaye kwa anakuandikisha tulipofika Nairobi na hapo pia changamoto zingine zikatukumba hivyo hivyo tulianza maandamano kwa furaha lakini tulipokuwa tunafikiria tunafikia uhuru uhuru park hapo pia tulizungukwa tena ama tuliona kundi kubwa sana na vyombo vya usalama polisi wakiwa wengi na tulijaribu pale kuzuiliwa lakini sisi kwa umoja wetu hatukuwa waoga sana tulijua vile ni vitisho tukiongozwa na viongozi wetu wakakamavu wa mashirika ya kutetea haki za binadamu walituambia kwamba haina haja ya kuogopa ili ni jambo la kawaida na sisi tumefata njia zote za kisheria we have a message for the president is that a problem now so and then our request is very simple we escort us we deliver the message to the president we will be peaceful we've got a, you, see, you see the, the we, you see the people we are carrying they, they, they are elderly we are aware of that fact nothing must go wrong you want us to agree yes you want us to talk yes the road we have our dad we have we have cleared the road we have cleared the road we have cleared the road still on the road you can see as you can see as you can see we are we are mr katam we are talking in good faith Mwisho mara baada ya kusumbuana na wale wakuu wa polisi tuliambiwa kwamba tumeruhusiwa kufika pale uhuru park lakini tumngoje general kaiseri pale ametumwa na rais ili ajaongee na sisi all of a sudden we saw the cabinet secretary for interior so 
a group is already engaging the police on the other side then you see the cabinet secretary then he came and um, the first instinct for our executive director was to engage him and ask him why would you send people to beat these people up and he was like i'm not here for war i'm here to receive my people umefika nairobi amwezi kurudi bila kuona rais na nimetumwa na rais nije niwachukue mpeleke nyi state hapa ambayo tumepata kutoka kwani mpaka kufikia hapa na kuambiwa tutaweza kuonana na rais angalau vile vilio vya ndugu zetu wale tunaishi nao ndugu zetu ambao wametuolea madada zetu ndugu zetu ambao sisi pia tumeoa kwao na wao pia visikike it was a complete disconnect a complete a complete disconnect in terms of 30 minutes ago you are saying that we are not allowed to stay out after a few minutes seconds then you are allowed to stay out so it means there was a, there was a loophole somewhere else or there is something that was not being done right but from that moment we went to stay out those security apparatus that were meant to barricade us that actually transformed to become our our, our convoy right it, <laughs> it became our convoy to to stay out yeah that's when we went to stay out it was not only exciting for the Makonde, it was even for us who live here in Nairobi, who pass through State House, but who never access any gate. We are not even sure this is where State House is. And we walked into a very big playground. And um, the Makonde leadership clearly and ably um, articulated the problems they've been facing. Katika maisha yetu, jamii ya Makonde, hii imekuwa kama ni ndoto. Shida iliyotufanya kufika mahali hapa ni kitambulisho. Kila jambo lazima uwe na kitambulisho. Hivi unavyoona familia hii kama utampata aliyofika form 4 alienda kimungu mungu. Hacha hivyo sisi watoto tulionao hata mimi naesema hapa sina birth certificate tatoa wapi na baba ana kitambulisho. Tunataka kuingia kwa vikundi. Huwezi kuingia kwa kikundi mpaka uwe na kitambulisho. Ume kuna vibati tunacheza nyumbani, vichama vidogo vidogo mia mbili mbili. Unaweza kupata pesa zako 2000, 3000, hata kukaweke kaunti, unafungua kaunti. Huwezi kufungua sababu ya kitambulisho. Tumeelezwa vile mmetembea kutoka Pwani, Mombasa wale kufika hapa yangu ni kuomba radhi kwa sababu imechukua muda mrefu ndio tufike kiwango cha kuwatendea haki kama wakenya wenzenu <tos> jemedari bwana kimodho mtabebana na watu hawa muhakikishe ya kwamba nikifika Mombasa Disemba wawe kila mmoja ameweza kupata kitambulisho yake na wakija ikulu ya Mombasa wakuje kama wakenya ambao wanatambulika wale ambao wameishi katika mashamba yao pia Jemedari ucoordinate na 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 counterpart wako wa ardhi kama kuna yule ambaye ameishi pahali pake na hajapata na hajawahi kupata cheti yake ya kumiliki shamba yake muhakikishe pia ameweza kupata ha? kafanya tukasahau yani majeraha aliyopata manjiani mo hata kuziona na polisi ivoi hata malo hapa pia kwa hapa kataka tusiende kwa hivyo tunashukuru na tunafurahi kwa hivi sasa kuwa sisi ni raia wa Kenya hii
The, the total number of uh, registered citizens were 1,580. At that particular time, the one we gave uh, citizenship, um, 1,580. Out of that, um, 1,250 got IDs, didn't cut, so they are able, they are capable, they are free to vote, they are free now to exercise their democratic right. The role of civil society uh, has been, to me, uh, remarkable. It is a civil society which actually has sensitized the government to realize the plight of these individuals, of these communities, and they are the ones who actually pushed the government to uh, do the vetting, uh, especially uh, the Kenya Human Rights uh, Organization. Uh, uh, they, 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 they've, been, they've been the, the forefront in, in ensuring that these people get their rights. The fact that the Makonde got citizenship is actually the beginning uh, rather than the end of their struggle. We have more work to be done around them. Awareness creation, empower, empowerment, so that now with time they can also be part of the mainstream when it comes to governance and the development processes in the country. We have uh, uh, legislation that needs to continually improve. For instance, this year we are working on the Identification and Registration of Persons Bill, which needs to encompass everybody in the country and recognize what kind of documents each person is uh, entitled to as long as they're within the borders of Kenya. No, the lessons from the Makonde are, are deep. Most of the times for you to get something, you have to move away from your, from your comfort zone. Let the ship sail. If you go into the deep waters, that is when you will know how deep the sea is and you will sail through. Again, it means that whatever you have in your mind to make a difference, Go for it. If you're alone, you'll make that difference. But if you bring just a small group of people to join you and they all agree that we need to make a difference, then you will change. You will change an entire trajectory of how things are viewed. And with time, do not be afraid to do things that appear impossible. Mimi na fry, kwa mdau kwa kupata kitambulisho, na tembea popote pale, na julika na kama mira hiya wa Kenya sasa. Tambulisheni <laughs> 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 Aki zangu nimezipata na mimi nitafaulu kwa sababu mimi ni mshindi. Hehehehe.